this is my new custom built video editing beast of a desktop PC. It has a 3.6 GHz 8 core processor, 64 GB of RAM, an MPG X570 Gaming Plus motherboard, and a GeForce RTX 2060 Super XC. Basically, this thing is super fast. Now, a lot of you guys know I've been on Apple products for quite some time now. I think it's been as long as I can remember now. I've been using my trusty 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro for many years now. I'd use it for when I would go to meetings and when I would edit on the go, but the bulk of my work was done on my 2014 27-inch 4K iMac. Now, before anybody points this out, yes, I know, that was a much older model I just showed you. I already sold my current model to somebody back in December, so this is all I have that I can dig up in storage to show you guys right now. So, yeah. Bear with me. I should not do that again. I'm out of shape. Ugh. Anyway, when I made the switch back to PC back in December, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of nervous. I absolutely love Mac OS and I do really love all Apple products. Yeah, Apple fanboy much. And quite honestly, I had pretty bad memories from using PC back when I was a teenager and a kid. So I was quite hesitant to make the switch, but I'd reached a certain point where I realized I just could not keep using Mac. It was necessary to make the switch. So I'm gonna tell you why I, as well as a lot of other content creators out there, are switching from Mac back to PC. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Alex Perry, and I'm a content creator and filmmaker from Toronto, Canada. Before I fully get started with everything, it would be much appreciated if you would just hit that subscribe button down below to support the channel. And don't forget to ring that little bell notification icon to get notified every single time I drop new videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Alex S. Perry if you want to ask me any questions related to this video or any other topic. Okay, so let's talk about why myself, as well as a lot of other content creators out there, are switching from Mac back to PC. So first, let's take a look at what I was currently using before I made the switch. So this is my late 2013 model 15 inch MacBook Pro. It has a two gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and an Intel Iris Pro 1536 megabyte graphics card. Like I said earlier, this was basically so I could edit photos on the go, as well as bring it to meetings with me so that I can take notes while I was discussing things with clients. And this is my 27 inch 5K retina display iMac. It has a 4 GHz quad core i7 processor, 32 GB of RAM, an AMD Radeon R9 M295X graphics card with 4 GB of video RAM, and a 256 GB SSD. This was used for the bulk of my work. Yep, I've been using a 6 year old laptop and a 5 year old desktop to do the bulk of my professional and YouTube work. So yes, it was definitely time for an upgrade. So let's talk about the problems I was facing and why it was time for an upgrade. One of the first reasons is 4K footage. Now, every time I tried to import 4K footage into one of my projects, it would work and I was able to do it, but it was slow, it was choppy, it was laggy, playing it back was just a nightmare. I would have to go all the way down to like 1 8th quality in Adobe Premiere Pro to be able to just like play it back and it would still like do that chop up thing and go uh, 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 right? So it, it was just like a complete nightmare to work with. Now, I know a lot of you might say 4K video isn't necessary, but come on guys, let's get with the times. Things are going way beyond that now. There's 6K, there's 8K, and I know it's not fully necessary, but you know, I want to kind of future-proof my work a little bit. I want to be able to look back at things, you know, years from now and say, oh, this is like in proper high resolution quality. So for me, 4K shooting and editing is a must. So being able to handle 4K footage properly and even beyond that is something that's very, very important to me. The second reason is efficiency or lack thereof. Both my laptop and my desktop were just not efficient enough for me to be able to effectively do my work. When your workflow gets interrupted, this has to be one of the worst things possible for productivity. Whether it's somebody who's physically interrupting you, you know, when your phone rings, when, you know, you get alerts for social media on your iPhone. iPhone, here we go again with iPhone. I'm assuming everybody's got iPhones out there. Apple fanboy over here. But you know what's even more disruptive and interrupts your workflow even more? When your computers just can't keep up. So if everything is constantly slowing down and your computer gets super hot and the fan just runs like crazy and you just hear that constant like noise, it's like, it could drive you insane. And, and that's just one of the worst things possible for your productivity. As the saying goes, time is money. That saying exists for a reason. So for me, when I was trying to export or render out videos on my iMac, 
I wouldn't be able to use my computer. If I tried to do something else, it would be super, super slow, and there was also a huge risk of it canceling or interrupting the export process where it would corrupt my file or it would just outright crash the program. So I believe it would take anywhere between two to five hours to export a proper 4K video. So, you know, I would lose a good two to five hours there of like proper productive time when I could have been doing something else. Now, yes, I could do other things and I would do it on my laptop or on my phone, but you know, I couldn't get a head start in a different project. I couldn't really do much else that was kind of memory or CPU intensive for the computer. So this just completely stopped me in my tracks and interrupted my productive workflow. I also couldn't do any video editing on my laptop because the specs just were not up to par for today's standards. So this was also something that really set me back. So I wasn't really able to be efficient and I had a lot of things that were interrupting my workflow. So now let's look at what exactly I might need if I wanted to upgrade my computer. So to address a lot of the issues I just brought up, I would want a computer that had a lot of RAM, had a really good and fast CPU, had a great and powerful and fast GPU or graphics card, had really fast startup times and performance, and had a really big screen for editing. So before finally deciding to make the switch back to PC, I actually started pricing out a new Mac on Apple's website. So I did explore all the different options out there. I went the MacBook Pro route first. So I just started pricing out the laptops, but I quickly realized it was quite expensive for what you were getting. Um, you were definitely paying for the form factor because it was convenient to be able to take it around. But since I do most of my work from my home office and studio, I didn't think it was really necessary for me to get a laptop so that I could bring it on the go to edit whenever I was out. Then I started looking at the Mac Pros since there was all this hype around the new Mac Pros and how awesome they could be. And everybody saw those videos on how they can go up to like $56,000. So I definitely didn't want to spend that much money and I didn't have the funds to do that. But I was trying to price out a Mac Pro that would be a similar build to what I would really need. And I think the price was still just absolutely ridiculous. Um, it was like, you know, almost $10,000, I think, for something that was not standard, but like would be a good level to be at right now without like crazy future proofing it. And then I looked at the middle tier there, which was another iMac and a desktop from Apple. And I quickly, once again, realized that when I priced this thing out where I wanted it to be, it was about seven or $8,000 Canadian. So this, in my eyes, was just absolutely crazy. I bought my previous iMac for I think $5,000 when I fully maxed it out. And today, maxing out an iMac wasn't even what I was looking at for $8,000. So to max out an iMac, it would be even more than that. So I realized I wasn't gonna be getting the best of the best, and I definitely still didn't have a budget of $8,000 to get a new computer. That's when I decided to go online, do some research, and start finding a proper build list of what I could potentially use if I were to build my own PC. Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready to hear the price of what I could build out my own PC that was equivalent to an $8,000 Mac? Are you ready for this? The total cost of my PC build was, wait for it, $3,000. That's right, just $3,000 Canadian. Now I did already have a few components. I did have a computer tower or case to put everything inside. And that could roughly cost about like, you know, 100 to 150 bucks. And I believe I did have a power supply. And that could be another, I don't know, 100, 150 or so for a really good one. So, you know, the price would have been a little bit higher if I got those, but still it wouldn't even, I don't know, it wouldn't even make a difference in going towards the price of a new iMac or Mac Pro. So like, once again, that is like a fraction of the cost of what the equivalent iMac build would have been. So for me, just from the price alone, it was a no-brainer of why I had to make the switch back to Windows and PC. But there were also actually a few other reasons for why I actually decided to make the switch. On top of the huge price difference, with Mac, unless I went the Mac Pro route where I was able to upgrade parts as I wanted to, if I got a laptop or if I got the iMac, I wouldn't really be able to upgrade parts as I needed to. So let's say two years from now or three years from now, I realize things are a little bit slow. Uh, maybe the standard has changed a little bit. 6K editing or 8K editing is now the norm and I need a little bit more power and oomph to my computer. I can't just go and upgrade the RAM. I can't just go and upgrade the processor or the motherboard or the GPU. Can't upgrade any of those parts. So after spending all that money, you're just kind of stuck with what you have. So it either has to be good enough and you kind of just let your days go by where you're dealing with a loss of performance and you're just allowing yourself to get back in that flow of allowing yourself to be interrupted by your hardware. That's not a place I want to ever be back again, so I want it to be in control of how I get to work. When you build your own PC, you can upgrade whatever part you want at any point in time. So even currently for my $3,000 build, there were a few little things that I could have upgraded if I wanted to, 
but for an extra, you know, $500 now, I didn't really want to spend that money. I didn't think it was necessary at this point in time, but two years from now, I might be able to upgrade the processor if I want to. I might be able to just get the new GPU for an extra $500 or $700, but I don't have to fork over another five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to be able to just upgrade one thing. So for me, that was just like a no brainer there. Also, for whatever the reason, the performance of all the Adobe Suite products, like Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, Photoshop Lightroom, they all actually perform a lot better on Windows and PC. For years, I've dealt with some pretty bad performance on all the Adobe Suite on my Mac, and everybody knows there's tons of problems. You know, Premiere Pro crashes all the time on Mac. So there's all these little things that you just constantly deal with, and it's just ridiculous. So, uh, after hearing so many people saying that it was it just runs and works so much more efficiently on Windows. All these things combined, it just, at the end of the day, made it a no-brainer for me to switch from Mac to PC. What are your thoughts on this? Have you run into any of these issues with your Mac products? Have you thought about making a switch to PC, but were you a little bit worried or scared to make the switch back? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this matter. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's why I, as well as a lot of other creators out there, are switching from Mac back to PC. I hope you liked this video, I hope you found it very informative, and I hope it helps you make up your mind and make a decision on if you think switching back to PC will be worth it for you. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below and drop me a comment letting me know what you thought. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification icon to get notified every single time I drop new videos like this one. There's lots more cool stuff coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned. My name is Alex Perry, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!